Hello, and welcome to today's lesson on linear equations and their graphs. This covers topics in the standards 2.2D and 2.2E. And it also covers questions in the study island topic linear equations and graphs. So if you're working on any of those things, this is where you want to be. This is the lesson you want to be listening to. Um, and in this lesson, we're going to be matching linear equations, so the ones with the y and the x in them, to word problems and graphs. And we're going to be writing them from graphs to points give, when you're given the slope in a point, and then when you're given the slope in the y-intercept. And as always, remember my study tips. Um, you should be writing notes down in your notebook. And if I go too fast, just press pause. And then when you're caught up, you can just pick right back up. And if you need to, you can rewind, fast forward, pause as much as you need to. There's no harm in that. And you can even pause at the beginning of a question, work it out yourself, see how you do, and then watch the video to check yourself. And that way you're getting a gauge at how well you know this topic. So I'm excited that you're here, and let's go ahead and look at some examples. <clears throat> so first we're going to look at some word problems. And when we're working with word problems and linear equations, the most common way we like to write our equations is in what's called slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form is this y equals mx plus b, where the m stands for slope, and the B stands for the y-intercept. Those are the two numbers that you fill into the equation. So when we're working, writing linear equations, you always have the y, you always have the x, but you're looking for a slope number to put in front of x, and you're looking for a y-intercept number to add or subtract to the end. So when we are looking at our word problems, the number in front of x is often the word and the number that talks about per, and that's because the definition of slope is rate of change. So it's the number that changes per something. So it changes per mile or per minute, something like that. Whereas the y-intercept, that only crosses the x -axis, or y-axis once. The graph will only ever cross the y-axis once. So this is typically your one-time number, where sometimes it's the also the starting number. We'll go here. Let's just go ahead and look at this example. Which of the situations below matches the given equation? We have y equals $3,000 minus 350 times x. So we're looking for the 350 is our slope because it's in front of x. Even though it's at the end, it's always the number, the coefficient on the x term. So that 350 is going to be a number that changes. And 3,000 is going to be that one time or starting number. So let's look at... Letter A, Waldo started a savings account with $3,000. He wants to know how much money he will have in his account, Y, after depositing $350 a month for X months. So he starts it with the $3,000. And so, but if you're depositing money, that's a change every month. But depositing is you're adding money into your account, whereas it's subtraction here. So this is, they do follow the rules. The 3000 is a starting. The 350 is per month. However, this would need to be an addition sign. So it's not going to be A. So let's go ahead and look at B. Darren ha owns his own business. His monthly expenses total 3000 per month, and he makes 350 for each sale. He wants to know how much money he will earn Y after making X sales. So here the 3000 is his expenses and the 350 is what he makes for each sale. So expenses, you would 
to f calculate how much you make, how much he'll earn, you would calculate first how much you're going to make minus your expenses. So you, this would actually be 350x minus 3,000 because you need to subtract out your expenses, which is backwards from what's here. So it's not going to be B. Letter C, Randy saved $3,000 for his vacation. He wants to know how much money that he has remaining Y after spending 350 a day on his vacation for X days. So it's 350 per day. That's a slow number. He started with 3000 That's what he saved. And so if you want to know how much is left over, you're going to start with 3000 and subtract 350 for each day, which is what is here. So our answer here is C. All right, next you're going to identify the correct graph based off given information. So I want to go ahead and go over a few notes first. First is we have a slope. Slope is, once again, we use the letter M for slope. And one of the equations that we can use is rise over run. Another uh, about slope is you have to know when you have a positive line and when you have a negative line. Remember, positive lines are uphill lines and negative slopes are lines that have downhill. Then, our definition of y-intercept, which I already mentioned, is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So, in our first problem here, we're given that, in this example, we're given that a line that has a slope of four-thirds. So, that's where it's going to, that means it's going to rise four and run three. And it's a positive slope, so we're going to have an uphill line. Now, all of these are uphill lines, so that doesn't help us narrow it out, but let's go ahead and see which ones have a slope of four-thirds and which one doesn't. So we're going to look for points that the graph crosses a corner of the graph. So here, this one rises one, two, three, four. So this one has a rise of four, and then it runs one, two, three. So this one has a slope of 4 thirds, so it could be W. Next, let's look to see if it goes through the point 3, 2. Remember, every coordinate is X, Y. So here we're going to go to 3 and then up 2. And the graph goes through that point. So that's actually, our answer here is actually going to be W, which is A. Let's go ahead and look real quick on what happens when it doesn't work out that way. So here we have, it goes through here, and it goes through here. So if we count this rise over run, one, two, three, one, two, this graph here has a slope of three over two. So that's why X didn't work out. And then Y, if you look at it, it has to be a graph that doesn't go through the point 3, 2. So actually, let's look at Z. If you look at 3, 2 here, the graph isn't going through that point. So that's why it couldn't be Z. So you, sometimes either one or the other will rule out a line. Okay, in this equation, we're asked to identify a graph from an equation. So we need to remember that our m, our slope number, is always the number in front of x. It's the coefficient on the x term. And then our y-intercept is the number that's being added or subtracted by itself. So here, we're looking for a graph that has a slope of 3 halves and crosses the y-axis at negative 3. I find it quicker to go through and look at the y-intercept of all the graphs to see if there's any I can narrow out. Okay. This graph here is crossing the y-axis at negative 3, so it could be that one. Here it's crossing at negative 2, so it couldn't be x. Here it's crossing the y-axis at negative, uh, positive 3, so it couldn't be y. And then here, this one is crossing the y-axis at positive 3 also, so it couldn't be z. 
So that's how quickly I can narrow it down to the correct answer Y, W. But it's always a good idea to go ahead and check that slope. So the graph crosses the corner of the grid paper here and here. So I rise one, two, three, and I run one, two. And it's an uphill line, so it's going to be a positive three halves. So the slope matches there also. So my answer is Z. Here we're identifying the correct graph from a set of two points. And this set of two points we're giving is 0, negative 1, and 2, 3. Remember, our coordinates are always x and y's. Always the x number first and the y number second. So we're just looking for the graph that has, that goes through both of these points. So I'm going to go on W here and look for the point 0, negative 1, which is right here. The right line isn't going through that dot, so it can't be W. Okay, the next one here we have, we're going to look at 0, negative 1 again. So 0, negative 1, once again, is right there, and the graph doesn't go through there, so it can't be x. Okay, the next one is 0, negative 1. The red line isn't going through that coordinate again, so it can't be y. z, 0, negative 1, the red line does go through that, so let's just double check 2, 3. The red line also goes through that coordinate, so z is your correct answer. Okay, these last sets of examples, you're going to be asked to write an equation from a certain given information. So to do that, first you're going to have to identify the slope. And if our slope isn't automatically given to us in the problem, we're going to want to use the equation, subtract the y's on top and subtract the x's on the bottom. And then also you're asked to identify the y-intercept. That'll be the last step you have to do. And if you're not given it in the problem, you're going to have to use the definition of y-intercept form to plug into and solve for b. So this first one here, the we want to identify our slope. Well, in the problem, it tells us the slope is 11 over 7. So I don't have to do any arithmetic to find it. I can just identify it. And then... It also, I'm lucky, it tells me the y-intercept also, so my, I don't have to do any math to figure that out either. I just have to remember that my, where to fill the numbers in correctly. So I'm going to put my slope in front of x and my y-intercept at the end. And plus a negative is the same as subtraction. So my answer that I'm looking for is this, which is letter A. So in this example, I'm asked to write an equation given one point in the slope. So my first step is to identify the slope, which they gave me in the problem is negative 7 thirds. My second step is to find B, but in this time they don't tell me what the y-intercept is. So this is where I'm going to have to use the, defin the standard or the definition of a y-intercept equation. So they do give me this point. And this point, it gives me an x and a y number. And I have my m number from the first step. So I'm going to plug those three numbers into this equation and solve for b. So my y number is negative 1, my m number is negative 7 thirds, and my x number is positive 6, and I'm solving for b. So my first step is going to be to multiply negative 7 thirds and 6, which is negative 14. Everything else stays the same. And then I'm going to add 14 to both sides. Negative 1 plus 14 is 13. These cancel out, and I'm left with B, which is my y-intercept number. So now I just need to fill those numbers in appropriately into my equation. And my slope number goes in front of x. And my y-intercept number is the number added or subtracted by itself. So my answer here is going to be letter A. My next and last example 
is it asks us to write an equation from two points. So I'm not given the slope or the y-intercept this time, so I'm going to have to solve for both. So my first step is I'm going to solve for this slope. So I'm going to use that formula, subtract the y's on top, subtract the x's on the bottom. And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and just label the numbers in the coordinates that I'm given. So my y numbers are 1 and 10, so I subtract those on top. And then my x numbers are negative 2 and 4, so I subtract those in the bottom. Being consistent, since I pulled 1 first here and it was in this point, I had to pull negative 2 first here in the formula. You have to be consistent that way. So 1 minus 10 is negative 9. And negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Negative 9 over negative 6 simplifies to positive 3 halves. So that's my slope. My second step is, is I have to solve for that b number. So I'm going to use my y-intercept formula. And at this point, I have two sets of coordinates. I can pick either one that I want to. Some people will pick this one because it has smaller numbers, and some people will pick this one because they're both positive. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one, but I just have to make sure that I just work the 4 and the 10 and ignore this one now. So my y number there is 10. My m number from step 1 is 3 halves. And my x number in that coordinate is 4. So then I'm just going to go ahead and solve this equation. Once again, my first step is to multiply 3 halves times 4 which is 6. Everything else stays the same. Then I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. 10 minus 6 is 4. These 6 is cancel, and I'm just left with b. So I have my b, my y-intercept number, I have my slope number, so I'm just going to put those into my equation correctly. I fill in the numbers, the slope number goes before x, and the y-intercept number is added and subtracted by itself at the end, so that means my answer here is d. The other type of problem you could see is in a question where they ask you to write an equation from a table. So this is going to write very similar to the last problem I just did with ten point, two points. The only thing is, is you get to pick which two rows of the table you're going to work with. Well, I personally like smaller positive numbers, so I'm going to work with 0, 2, 7, and 5. So that means I'm ignoring this last piece down here. I don't need it. It's extra information. So the first, it's going to work just like before. My first step is to solve for the slope. So I'm going to subtract my x numbers on the bottom and my y numbers on the top. So my y numbers here are 2 minus 5. And then in the same order with my x is 0 minus 7. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. 0 minus 7 is negative 7, and that simplifies to positive 3 sevenths. That's what my slope number is going to be. Then I have to solve for my y-intercept number the exact same way as before. I'm going to use my y equals mx plus b formula. And this time I can just pick one row that I want to work with. I personally think 0 and 2 is easier to work with than 7 and 5. So I'm going to use 7 and 2. So my y number there is 2. And I just found out that my m number is 3 over 7. And my x number is 0 plus b. And then I just solve for b. Well, 3 plus 7, I'm oh, sorry, 3 over 7 times 0 is 0. 0 plus b is b, and that 2 equals just carries down, so here my b is 2. So then I just fill those in appropriately. In my equation y equals mx plus b, my m number goes before x, and my B number goes at the end, which was 2. So here, I'm, my answer is going to be B.